Welcome to Gather Geeks by BizBash. I'm David Adler, and before we start, I want to introduce you to one of our fantastic sponsors, Skipster. They are the guest management platform used by top event teams for everything from guest lists to seating charts and online invitations. If you're looking for the next generation event software that helps deliver the perfect guest experience, head over to Skipster's website. It's spelled Z K I P S T E R dot com to try a free event. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Editor-in-Chief Beth Kormanick. Hi, David. Hey, Beth. Here we are on another Gather Geeks podcast. And today we welcome back to Gather Geeks, Todd Fiscus, owner of Todd Events. He's an event designer based in Dallas and Houston and is known for weddings and personal celebrations, high profile nonprofit galas and balls, as well as corporate events. Our editorial team named him to our top event designer list. And I think of his aesthetic as having a sense of elegance or fun or both at the same time as the situation calls for it. Um, he's really one of those interesting event minds, don't you think, David? I believe he's one of the smartest guys in our business, where he may come off as somebody that sort of is all about the design. His, his ideas of strategy are underneath everything that he does. Yeah, the last time he was on Gather Geeks, he talked about budgets and money and yep. what, what you can get for for your money if you have a, a good, a great, or an amazing experience. And today we're going to shift and talk about first impressions at events, how he gets uh, brands to take risks and help them frame their thinking to understand the true purpose of an event and how design can evoke emotion. And Todd was part of our Skipsters uh, first impression photo shoot, which was uh, a way of capturing what people look like when they actually look in a, go into a room and see what, what, uh, what the reaction is. And it was, it was really an interesting visual example of how people feel. Great. Let's take a listen. So what is the Todd Fiscus approach to that first <laughs> impression? What is the, what are you trying to achieve and what do you, what do you train your people to, uh, to do in terms of, you know, making an experience come to life? So for me, that's so funny because every party has kind of a different first impression. Um, I, I wish I could say it's, a, it's an exact formula, but for me, I would say it's different each time. And the reason is, is because certain, I believe that the number one p part of my job, the most important piece is that an event should capture the spirit of the host. And I try diligently to make sure that our work or feels and presents itself as if it's part of the vernacular. So if it's at a beautiful project in Napa Valley like last weekend, then the first impression that I want out of the guests should reflect the property and the, the beautiful quietness and the gorgeous garden and the flowers. Like I, I think the first impression on that job would be quiet. Like they would walk in and be almost a sigh of peacefulness and beauty. Um, whereas if I'm doing a, I have a giant debutante ball coming up in December and the after party is a black and white and dark blue, all Ming vase impressionism with a giant headliner rap star, that party, you better walk around the corner and say a couple of expletives come out of your mouth as you look at that party. So because the idea of that job is you walk in and it should be, whoa, like immediately you should be caught off guard by the, by the technology and the, the, the grandeur of the setting. So and I want it to start at the top of the roller coaster. That project, I want people to walk into that room and be at the top of the roller coaster. And then from then on, it's a it's just the so, ride of their life. Oh, that's so, interesting. That's a very interesting analogy. So, they're, so each one is different to me because based on the flow, the temperature of the client, what's their personality? Are they a quiet are they a quiet person or are they a loud, exuberant, funny, amazing, crazy person? Like it, 
so to me, the first impression should be the spirit that they are, um, and not necessarily about me or my work. It's really about their exp- the guest experience walking into that specific five, six, seven hour moment in time. And how do you then go and analyze that person to really find out who it is? Like, how do you, what do you, what is your process? Well, I, I really think I connect well with our clients. Um, many of them become friends. Uh, it, it, sometimes it happens instantaneously and you can really get an understanding of who they are. Sometimes it takes a few days, a few months, a few hours. Um, they're all, again, they're all so, each one is almost idiosyncratically them, their own little experience. Like they're not, they're not really connected to each other, but some are very vulnerable and authentic and they tell you all of their hopes and fears and dreams and all their amazing thoughts straight from the beginning and others, you kind of have to learn to build a personality around them. Um, and you have to dig a little hard because they're pretty protected and guarded and they don't really share very much. So you have to, you just kind of have to spend time with them and be, you know, their friend, their confident, their therapist. <laughs> 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 and, and pretty soon they'll share. Typically you can, for me, I can usually get a feel on, you know, why are they having the event? Are they, are they being a little show offy? Are they, and I mean that in the best manner, light. I'm not trying to be ugly about right. it, but are they, are they trying to be grand? Are they, are they being grand? Are they a peacock? Do they like to puff up and say, I did this and beat their chest? Like you can, or are they people that are super quiet and then serve the most amazing caviar and Dom Perignon and they think, oh, it's just champagne. Right. Right. So they're different. The people, the people to me, the energy comes out of the party that's in the party comes out of the host and their guests typically are kind of like them. You think, you bird, think about so it. birds I mean, of a feather flock together? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, kind of. Really? <laughs> <laughs> they, they tend to be, they tend to be the same. So I find that if we stick with a little bit towards, you know, if it's a wedding, you know, it's a little bit more diverse because we have, you know, technically three couples, parents of the bride, parents of the groom, parents of the groom, groom, whatever it may be, but you have multiple, you tend to have multiples that are involved. But, um, and for corporate, I think it's all about the brand and what the brand's underlying message is. I try to stay away from the the upfront message because I think that's kind of expected. But if you can get to the underlying core, the thing that's a little more subtle and subdued, I think it makes a more interesting party. So when you when you talk about this this I like this roller coaster uh, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're at the top of the roller coaster and when you come in, is that what you're saying? Or are you at the bottom of yeah. the roller coaster? You're you at know, the top. Well here Yeah. So here's the you know, here you know, a lot of people use I use the roller coaster analogy a lot with our sales team because when you look at an event and say you arrive for cocktails and you have forty five minutes for cocktails and you're just doing past hors d'oeuvres and string music, that's kind of like on the ramp up, right? Okay, like right. you're you're going tick, 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 tick. you're going up the roller coaster. There's this. nothing really <laughs> exciting. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just kind of in the car. You're noticing the view. Nothing's really amazing at that point. But when you get to the top and there's that little awkward pregnant pause right before you whip down and then scare the hell out of yourself. But that moment is the same in a party. So if you walk into an amazing after party or a dinner or, or a really great band is on, you want the ride to take off and, and then you don't want to stop the ride. Um, it's, we, I find a lot of planners like put a lot of stop gaps and stuff, you know, cut the cake here, take pictures, bride goes, does that, you know, and they put all these gaps. I tend to get all the formality stuff over with at the beginning and just let the roller coaster go because it's much more fun. People tend to loosen up once all the formalities are complete. They have a much more joyous experience. And you do that for corporate as well? I do. Corporate, it depends on the corporation. If I'm, you know, if the corporation has a very formal spirit, then sometimes they don't really like the roller coaster ride. They'd rather take a train. (laughs) <laughs> right. So, but do you believe so, in things like I'm saying, noticing a lot of like um, brand tunnels and things like that? Is that uh, an example of the roller coaster at the top? Or is kind that kind of, you know, you know, branding tunnels, um, anything, you know, that's kind of the, um, 
kind of the Alice in Wonderland approach, you know, shrink the opening and then you open up into something big and amazing. Mm-hmm. To me, that's what those tunnels do. They kind of, you know, they kind of bring you in a little bit, take you out of your comfort zone. You feel a little crowded and then all of a sudden it releases, you know, a sense in your brain that you're in something big, open and broad. So I think that has a lot to do with that. And it's a little bit more of immersion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, in a technology-based world now, I think a lot of people are so immersive in things, and those tunnels tend to be, I call them like attention, <laughs> they're a little bit of ADD, um, because they kind of hit you with all those impacted images, branding, logos, color, whatever they may be, all at the same time. Like you're watching a TV on fast, right, right, right. Like on fast forward. Right. Um, some people really respond to that. Um, I find that a super young market, like uh-huh. millennial to the mid thirties, probably respond more to that because it has a video game kind of sensibility. Um, so it, it hits, it feels comfortable to them to be assaulted like that. If you have a much older stayed client who's a little bit more traditional, they find that to be almost assaulting. That's so, so interesting. Too. Um, those things don't really work. So I, I, again, I really go back to like trying to, I, we try and teach our team to use their third eye, which is, you know, their eyes are for seeing and doing. And the third eye, which lives in their mind is what is the guest experience? What try to be the guest, to be the bartender, be the bus boy, be the server. Did you leave enough access for them to work in? Like, does the bar work? If you're the bartender, be the guest, be, be that person and your job will be done much more thoroughly. Planning an event and wondering how you can give your attendees the best experience possible? Take advantage of customized meetings with Hilton that make it easier than ever to incorporate health, wellness, and great breaks. Hilton will help you build an extraordinary meeting that attendees will remember. To book your next meeting or event, go to meetings.hilton.com. Is there a, is there a, um, when you, a first impression for a, a millennial versus an older person at the bar scene and things like that? Have you learned anything that you can share? I've loved the Alice in Wonderland so far. I love the roller coaster. I love the third eye. You are fantastic at these, <laughs> uh, uh, images. <laughs> well, you know, for me, it depends. Again, you know, for example, you know, we just, we had a, a very young group last weekend. So we had, 200 people, 114 of them were under probably 32, mm-hmm. so between 24 and 32 years old, so a pretty young audience. Um, they were much more, in, I would say, enjoyed – they enjoyed and were more impressed by the – formality of the event because they that's something they don't go to every day. Wait, wait, go, d- dig a little deeper into that. What do you mean by that? The formality um, of... For example, you know, they, you know, these, you know, we're on a beautiful estate, for example, they arrived to a 16-piece strings group, we had passed Dom Perignon, we had a caviar bar, they went into a beautiful ceremony, a young friend of the couple did the ceremony, actually conducted the service, and he was really good. It kind of had an evangelical kind of, he did lots of what I call shout outs to the audience and he'd say, say yes to the celebration. And the whole wedding party would say yes to the celebration. It was a, it, it was a fun, it was a really fun kind of quirky ceremony. So the juxtaposition between this really formal, beautiful, serene setting and then this kind of quirky, young approach to what a wedding ceremony is supposed to be. I mean, he covered all the bases, but he did it in such a personal way. Um, but it was fun to watch because the audience, which was primarily young people, also because they got him, played in really well. And it was funny. You'd look around the audience and you'd see a few older people like, what in the hell is happening? <laughs> right? Because they, it wasn't that it, they didn't understand it. It wasn't as formal. So, but I like the juxtaposition of that there. It worked. So do you think that so that, for does me, that work on social, on like if you, like from what you learned in that social event, it sounds like it's perfect for a branding and a corporate event too, in some form. It is. It, the, uh, it, corporations, you know, we do a lot of fashion and like uh, retail type of eventing, and they tend to be very, very, very close-minded to uh, 
outside ideas. They Their brand comes in a book and they send you pictures of what their brand is and our brand is only a white rose and our brand is only a black, you can only use black ink. You know, they, they don't, they don't very, they don't move the needle very often. And we always try to convince them of your brand is your brand because it's well known, it's respected, it does beautiful clothing, the fabrics are fantastic, the 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 sewing, the every all the details are pristine, but that's your brand, but that's not the experience. That's not the human experience. Like if you want to, you know, showcase a film, for example, on Alexander McQueen, because it's coming out, and McQueen calls and wants to do a party about it. The the party needs to be what the what's the underlying story of the film because the film's going to tell everything pretty straightforward, right? They're going to keep a very consistent through line. They're going to start at the beginning. They're going to end at the end. You're going to applaud. You'll have taken in lots of knowledge and content. But what's the experience? Because the experience isn't that. So you have to build something else that that reflects like a mirror whatever that brand is so that they go, I'm so glad I got up and shaved my legs for this. You know, Uh like I'm super Uh happy. I got out of, you know, I got out of bed. I shaved my legs. I came to this film preview, which could have been hideously boring, but the experience itself was interesting and relatable to the guest experience, not not just the film. So go a little deeper on that. Like what a good example of that. Yeah, so like for when Chanel came to Dallas for their um, big show, they did a preview of the film Coco, for example. And while the film is incredibly serious and tells the story of Coco Chanel's journey and her successes and her failures and her bankruptcy and reopening and relaunching due to Stanley Marcus's assistance and you know all of these, so the story was very serious and big. But they staged it like an old drive-in movie in Texas in the 50s and did a 100 antique cars and you sat in old convertibles, ate popcorn and watched a movie about wow, Chanel. That's fantastic. So, but the point, but the juxtaposition of telling the story from the, you know, the early to mid 50s, they wanted to immerse you in the actual time period that the film was based, yeah. but they didn't make it. They could have also gone the other way and made you sit in a super formal dressing salon like in Paris and you would have watched the film and the space would have been serious and the film be serious. Therefore, the experience to the guest would have been heavy. Mm-hmm. But instead, they made the experience to the guest whimsical and the film heavy. So the juxtaposition is what made that party – like people were like, I can't believe I'm sitting in an old car watching a movie about Chanel and eating truffled popcorn. Like – it gave them an, a unique perspective. So, you know, it brings me to the point of, we talk about first impressions, but then what are the, the you have to create lasting impressions. And uh, that Chanel example is kind of the lasting impression, right? Yeah, I think they. I thought they did a yeah. spectacular lasting impression. I mean, some things that you do imprint on people in a way... You know, we, I call it the fickle 500. I tend to work, (laughs) I work a lot in the same audience. So for example, like this past weekend, I probably had 40 adults at this one party. And in a month at Terranea, we have those same, probably 32 of those 40 adults will be attending another event that we're producing for another family, but they're all friends. Mm -hmm. So I call it the fickle 500. (laughs) There's the the same 500 people show up to every party you do. God, you have a challenge. (laughs) It's really hard because you, you want them to have a unique experience each time and you don't want them. Well, I don't, I don't like people to walk in and go, Oh, it's Todd. I recognize that chair, right? <laughs> or whatever it may be. It, I don't want it to feel repetitious right. in the experience. So, you know, it's it's hard to keep your work. You know, I always try to remember there's so many people who have been to multiple projects that I've done. But then I'll get a great compliment and a young girl was standing at a bar like that we had built two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And she said to me, I walked up and she goes, you're Todd, right? And I said, I am. And she said, so this is the fifth wedding I've been to that you've done. And I said, okay, I wasn't sure where this was going. And I said, great. I said, well, then you've been busy this summer. And she said, I have. She goes, but I want to tell you something. She goes, every single one feel different, but every single one have the same things. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, 
every bar you build is like the coolest bar ever. It's like a bar in a restaurant or a hip hotel or something. I always want to hang out at them. Whereas I go to another wedding you don't do, and it's like a crappy table stuck in the corner. <laughs> She's, so, you know, it's like, and I said, thank you. It's one of my things is to have, I, I always call them the heart of a party. And I always feel like you have to build a heart because it's like the kitchen in your house. No matter how hard you try, people stand in your kitchen when you have a party at home. So I always try to build a heart at every party because I think people just like to congregate somewhere. So you, you go, so go deeper in that. That's really interesting too. Like when you strate- strategically figure out your event, what does a heart look like? It could look, come in many different ways, right? Many different it can. Things. The heart can be, the heart can be, it can be wildly different. The heart could be a, you know, it could be an immersive experience, much like a piece of art where you go inside of it and it's something really cool. It depends on what the emotion you want out of it. Right. You want people to laugh. Do you want people to feel sexy? Do you want them to cry? Do you want them to feel solidarity? Do you want them to feel loyalty? What, what do you want out of it? Like what's the, what's the core? And so the heart of a party is fluctuates. You know, I, Typically, because mostly what we do is social and social gala work, <laughs> most of it always <laughs> goes ends up being around a bar format because I think that's where people just tend to congregate regardless. And so I like to create that experience, whether it's, you know, flush mounted, you know, LED walls built into the bookcases in the bar, or does it feel like you're in a great hotel lobby? Do you want it to feel like you're, you know, at the blue bar in London? Like what, what's the experience? What's the heart? What do you, what do well, you want out of the guest? Well, you're kind of bringing the Maya Angelou quote to, um, to life in terms of you know, making them, it <laughs> doesn't matter what so. you say, it's what you feel. And, you, and it's kind of like Instagram moment on steroids. But it's the feeling of an it Instagram is. moment, which is the, the next level, I believe. I mean, that really is interesting. Yeah. Well, if you're at a party, you know, it, here's the thing. I always feel like events, if we're doing our job right, I learned this from, this is a Philippe Stark trick. who's one of my, you know, mm-hmm. design idols. When Philippe Stark did the Delano Hotel many, many moons ago in Miami, when you went, when you checked into that hotel, you walked in the front door and you went through that, this huge wall of ficus trees with a tiny purple door. And you went through this little door and you were in this soaring space with like white drapes billowing, just beautiful soaring space, beautifully lit, almost austere. And it was 175 feet long. It was like ridiculously long and 40 foot tall. And, but I remember thinking when you walked in the front door, by the time you got to the restaurant at the back, you were sexier, taller, thinner. <laughs> uh, you just felt like a, you felt like a different person. It was, it, it was, it's like someone had attached or grabbed a string on the top of your head and had just pulled you up and you felt you felt more powerful by the time you got to the back of the hotel, which I thought from a design perspective, I thought what an ingenious way to think about creating this moment where I call it like life's runway. (laughs) You know, it's like the music is great. The lighting is flawless. And I'm like, shit, by the time I got to the end, I was way better looking than when I walked in the front door. And and your first impression is a feeling, not an impression. It's a feeling. (laughs) Yeah, uh, it's really the way it made me feel there. Like, did I feel welcome? Did I feel prettier? Did I feel, you know, did I hang out at the bar all night and felt like, you know, pardon my French, big dick in charge? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. You, you know, did I hang out at the bar and everybody hanging out with me was cool and we had a great time and it felt good? First impressions matter at special events. From opening a beautiful invitation to a fast and friendly check-in at the door, everything your guests experience makes a difference. Skipster is the event software that is built for creating first impressions that last. Visit their website at zkipster.com to try it out. That's z-k-i-p-s-t-e-r, Skipster, to try it out. When you design these events, and you've seen these same guests now, since you seem to have a whole following, is there something about the atmosphere that promotes a sense of productivity among the guests? Are they more imaginative? Are they coming up with more ideas? Are they like the outcome of the guest experience that's even more than just the event itself? Do you notice that? Like, do people get closer? 
I notice people get swept up in the emotion you're trying to create. And so, you know, so if you, you know, if you have, so if you have a couple, for example, in a wedding that, and they're all about music, you know, if you stage the music correctly, you put in high moments, you know, like a favorite song at the right spot with a huge string orchestra and a great band and a killer vocalist. And if you drop it in at the right spot, all of a sudden 200 people will applaud a single song in the middle of a wedding. And that, that like never happens. Like Mm -hmm. it, you kind of have to, you kind of have to orchestrate where those go so that they're, they're little moments. And those are the things people like grab onto and then remember forever. Right. So I'm, I'm, you know, I've we asked, did a wedding. Go ahead. We did a wedding three years ago and we used this vocalist named Lily McLeod with Impulse, Jim's band. And what I remember is three years later, people come up to me at a cocktail party and go, I remember when that woman sang a house is not a home with that orchestra. I've never cried at a wedding and it was gorgeous. And you're like, wow, that was three years ago. Wow. So what, what do you do when you you're, when you're at the, when you're running, I've asked other people and you know, everyone says nothing is really by accident. Are you there? Um, <laughs> are you, are you orchestrating? Are you sitting there with headsets on saying, okay, do this, go do that. Are you managing that event in real time? You're managing both. You're, you're, you've set expectations and you have, you know, I always try to narrow every event. You can't have, everything can't be amazing. It, mm-hmm. it, it's almost overbearing if it's all on top of you. Like, you know, some, some people like every sense, like it's almost like over overload of your senses. They like everything to be overwhelming. Like the flowers are overwhelming. The scent is overwhelming. The food is extravagant. It's heavy. It's rich. It's like everything is, (laughs) I use this bad term poorly everything is everything you know what i mean like it's all just too big and then i think those events tire people Mm -hmm. interesting and so i i think there's a there's a high and low balance to how you build an event and yes it is a little manipulative to say as a party planner to go you know when we cut the cake and we know that you know something bad had happened and she, you know, had a hard time here or there or whatever. And you play a very specific song that meant a lot to her at a moment where everyone's feeling very loving. It just accentuates the moment. It's not, it, I, you know, I could say it's manipulative, but it's also, Mm -hmm. it's put there for a reason. Right. It's Mm -hmm. put there. So you're, so you feel bigger, your heart feels more full, you're, your senses are more alive. You put it there for a reason. So I do think that's important. And I think that's what makes great event planners great at what they do because they are really good about navigating that experience. And then, yes, yeah, t- you know, when you're on the job site and you get the perfect dance moment, yeah. Like I don't have, if I want confetti cannons on a dance floor, I don't say they go off at 1015. I just say, confetti cannons will go off at critical moment between 10 and 11 because you want the audience, you want the energy to be right. You just don't want to fire it. And there's like nine people on the dance floor at 10, 15, just shitty songs. So you wait until it's flawless and perfect and the energy is there and you can feel it. And then you go, go. So some of it you have to do live time. And then some of it you have to kind of have a game plan going into it. A loose game plan. <laughs> and do you, do you, yeah, do you, but you know, we, we, we cover, um, festivals and conferences and weddings and all that. Yeah. Is, is, are the building blocks, the foundation all the same in some way? Are you looking at everything? I mean, there's a nuances between each type, but ultimately you're, no, you're yeah. trying to get people to, to feel things. Yeah. Regardless, I think you're, you're still building on an emotional connection somewhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, if it's a convention or, a trade floor or you, you know, you want to be able to tell a story and you want the people to be connected to that story. It's, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, it depends on if you've got a floor hawking wares, right? Like if it's just like everybody's selling stuff, that's going to have a different feel 
and should be designed to to complement that, to enhance the buying experience. Like all of those things should be built to enhance that experience, but not. But if you're just doing a an educational based trade floor, then you want it to feel about being smarter, about being mm-hmm. brighter, mm-hmm. about being more informed. So as long as you play into those things, I think both both things work. You just have to stay strong to what the what the emotional outcome is right, of the right, experience. Right. Um, well, I want to end this with um, I've been doing these first impressions kind of like what Oprah does. And I want to <laughs> mention a word and tell me what first comes to mind. Like what's your first oh, impression? Um, okay. And so we'll play this game. And um, if I say the word Dallas, what comes to mind? When you say Dallas? Yeah. What is Dallas to you? First thing. Home. Home. Okay. What does the word wedding mean to you when I say the word wedding? Love. What does the what does the word event planning mean to you? Crazy. <laughs> then you're the second or third person <laughs> that has that has responded <laughs> that way. Okay, so when I say the word Todd Fiscus, what do you want others to think about you? Mm, that's a hard one for me. Um Talented and hardworking. It's hard for me to get to one no, word. That's okay. That's okay. That's 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 interesting. I mean, because it's a really interesting because the first impression. I mean, it it comes down to when you go into a room, the first thing you think about when you go in. What what is you what what would be your first impression when you walk into an amazing space? What would you what would be the word that would use? We have a picture all you already of you. What would be the word? Well, if I did the space and it was amazing, then it's going to be pride. And if okay. somebody else did the space and it's amazing, it's going to be jealous. <laughs> <laughs> it helps raise the bar. <laughs> like with David Stark, who I adore and I think is so talented when he does things and I look at him, I'm like, damn it, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, you so know, a little jealous. this industry has, thanks to people like you, have, have has really sort of jumped in miles and miles in terms of ingenuity and that yeah, David Stark says absolutely. that it's really not about budget. It's about ingenuity. And yeah. that's the one thing I learned from him. Not one of many things, but, um, well, great. That's sweet. I just, I hope that people that I always, you know, I'm my poor team. Sometimes I think they never think I'm happy because even though I know we are, our phrase we say a lot here is every single day strive for perfection and be really, really happy with the attempt Mm -hmm. because perfection doesn't really exist. So, you know, but if you don't at least push for it and demand it every single time and really, really, really push, which is incredibly exhausting sometimes, then you can't be happy because you didn't make the attempt. Right. Right. So on the let's just uh, tell people how they can get in touch with you if they want to take the roller coaster ride. Take a roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you can see our work and a little bit more about us and me at toddevents.com. And if you'd like to get in touch, I have the world's most difficult email, Todd at toddevents.com. <laughs> and um, but otherwise. Um, those are probably the two right. easiest ways or find me on Instagram, my That's only right. social media fix. Okay. Good. Thank you so much, Todd. Thank you so much, David. Thanks for that conversation, David. You really appreciated his roller coaster analogy in that conversation to describe the journey that event guests go on. Yeah, he really, I love that. I love that concept. And that's how he designs things so that you really, you jump in and you go up to the top and you go all the way back down. And I got a feeling he goes back up to the top again, maybe not as high. Mm -hmm. A couple loop-de-loops in there or something. Uh, He also has a unique challenge in his fickle 500, as he called them. He often sees the same guests at each event or the person is a guest one day, a client the next and back to being a guest uh, the next month. So you you can't go back to the same bag of tricks. Right, he can't be, he, his formula can't be a formula. <laughs> right, or you have the signature things that you yeah. that you identify, but you do them differently each Absolutely. time. Absolutely, everybody wants their own thing. So Beth, what's going on at BizBash this week? 
Well, this, this is so important, David. This is the last chance that people have to register for BizBash Live New York. So come join me, join David, join the rest of the BizBash team. Spectacular, insightful and speakers and exhibit hall full of suppliers to inspire your next events and more networking. I could go on. Um, it's Wednesday, October 24th at the Javits Center. We've been hard to make this a terrific day for everyone. So go online now, register at bizbashlive.com. And if you need to eat inspiration for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, this is the place to go. Before we end, we want to thank the people that have, have produced this podcast. Uh, Dave Nelson, our producer. Claire Hoffman, who is our editorial hand that helps us with all of the content. And also Rebecca Pappas, who distributes the podcast for us. So until next time, what do we say, Beth? Gather on. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you'll join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. So when's the big event? Hilton's here for planners with their exclusive customized meetings. Become a wow maker and save time by letting Hilton help you present an extraordinary event, one that leads to memorable and meaningful connections. Visit meetings.hilton.com and let Hilton help you.